Like them hard dock. Yes. The way I understand it. Here we go. We'll get a story. Uh, Apollo 11, Houston, go. Good, and call up from Houston, uh, Apollo 11. Apollo 11, uh, meaning that they're no longer Columbian Eagle, but they are docked again in that configuration. Almost everything yet to be done by the Apollo 11 astronauts had been done earlier by Apollo travelers, but one thing was wonderfully unique. The crew of the Eagle had to move themselves and their priceless cargo of moon rock samples into the vehicle that had been known as Columbia. Then, the part of the limb that had carried them from the moon was discarded just as the limb stage that had brought them to Tranquility Base was left behind. The command and service module fired its engine at 12.56 a.m. on Tuesday, July 22nd, to get itself out of lunar orbit. Then the reunited trio of voyagers was truly on its way home, two days away. The speed of the homeward-bound Apollo increased as it got nearer the Earth. At 25,000 miles per hour, the service module was dropped away. A heat shield protected the command module as it plunged into the atmosphere, its first contact with air in eight days. The small craft and its remarkable crew were all that remained of the original 3,000 tons of rocket and cargo and fuel that shook the Earth and ignited the imaginations of millions. This is... Oh, golly. <coughs> I've got a visual contract from Araya 3. Oh, They're right. seeing this glowing... A re-entry like a comet coming back to the Earth's atmosphere. Now they're beginning to feel G-force for the first time right now in eight days since they lifted off from the uh, Cape. At least nice Mike, we can say that about Mike. The other two felt some G. Well, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. One six G. Forgot about they're going to the moon's surface. Yeah. I don't mean I forgot about they're going to the moon's surface. <laughs> <laughs> they can't find it. Second level, this is Hornet. Hornet, over. Hot dog. There they are. And they're obviously all right. The uh, chutes have deployed. The aircraft has visual on the chutes. Hot dog. Apollo 11 has made it. Splashdown should be just now. They're back from the moon. Oh, Astronauts boy. Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins landing in the Pacific Ocean, southwest of Hawaii. Apollo 11 is back from the moon, safe and sound. The crew is just reported to Air Boss as they rest in their command uh, module there on the surface of the Pacific, that they're in fine shape aboard the aircraft carrier Hornet. Uh, President Nixon was waiting to greet the returned astronauts. Let's listen to Dallas Townsend aboard the Hornet. Dallas? And the first astronaut is coming out. That would be Buzz Aldrin, wouldn't it, uh, Dallas? I believe so, yes. Recovery helicopter number 66 will come down slowly overhead, and uh, the net will be lowered uh, by means of a winch from the hatch on the starboard side of the helicopter and the uh, astronauts will be brought aboard the helicopter one after the other by means of that net. There he goes, the last astronaut going up. The third astronaut is now in the helicopter. The door is closed and the helicopter is uh, going to come back to the ship now. This is the first time in history that the President of the United States has been on board the recovery carrier to greet the returning astronauts. Have all your prayers been answered? Yes. I would like to say to the president, to the presidents of the United States, President Nixon, President Johnson, President Kennedy, to all of NASA, to all of the contractors that have helped to make this flight successful, to the astronaut crew, to the men, the three men who made this historic flight, and to all the peoples of the world, we thank you for everything, your prayers, your thoughts, just everything. And if anyone were to ask me how I could describe this flight, 
I can only say that it was absolutely out of this world. You know. Dr. Carpentier slides it open, and here they come. Man's dream and a nation's pledge have now been fulfilled. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long range exploration of space. And none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. The lunar age has begun. We may hope but we should not believe in the excitement of today that the next trip or the ones to follow are going to be particularly easy. But we have begun with a small step for man, a giant leap for mankind, in Armstrong's unforgettable words. In these eight days of the Apollo 11 mission, the world was witness to not only the triumph of technology, but to the strength of man's resolve and the persistence of his imagination. Through all time, the moon has endured out there, pale and distant, determining the tides, the tugging of the heart, a symbol, a beacon, a goal. Now man has prevailed. He's landed on the surface of the moon. He's stabbed into its crust. He's stolen some of its soil to bring back to a, in a tiny treasure ship to perhaps unlock some of its secrets. The date's now indelible. It's going to be remembered as long as man survives. July 20th, 1969, the day man reached and walked on the moon. The least of us is improved by the things done by the best of us, because if we are not able to land, at least we are able to uh, follow. Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins are the best of us, and they've led us further and higher than we ever imagined we were likely to go. We had indeed, more than 600 million of us, been taken further and higher than we could have imagined. And now we know some things we didn't know in those summer days of 1969. In his masterful takeover of the controls, Neil Armstrong landed the Eagle with something less than 10 seconds of fuel left. He and Buzz Aldrin were that close to a probably disastrous crash. And they and all the men and machines at the Space Center in Houston did not know just where they were on the foreign surface of the moon. They needed to know precisely to plot the rendezvous with Mike Collins and Columbia that would bring them home. It took more than four hours to compute the exact place. The footprints left by Armstrong and Aldrin will last no more than 500,000 years, wiped out by the relentless impact of micrometeorites. And there is this poignant thought. No one, not even the explorers themselves, heard a wonderful crunch of their boots in the sandy environment where there is no atmosphere to transmit sound. The silence persists, and so, of course, does memory. In time, shared memory is known as history. Surely, we shared something grand. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. What a moment. Man on the way to the moon. Houston, uh... Oh, jeez. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. They're back from the moon. Astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins landing in the Pacific Ocean southwest of Hawaii. And if anyone were to ask me how I could describe this flight, I can only say that it was absolutely out of this world. Yeah. Oh, boy. 